the most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks, fully dynamic real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $100,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in to the virtual Dover Motor Speedway for round 11 of the OP Racing Throwback Series, season number two. My name is Dawson Wise. You're live on the Turn 3 Racing Network, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news and the guy that spoils the party a little bit, but we might be going right back off the air. I believe there uh, has been an issue with the session we are in, with the timing of the session. You can tell it's sunset. Uh, Dover, as many of us know that watch NASCAR, uh, it's not a facility with lights. I heard them talking about that just a moment ago. Um, I will confirm for you here in a moment. Um, but if so, we'll go back into standby, at least for a moment, until we do get the session right. Uh, let me double check for you. Uh, yes, so they are going to be making a new session. Unfortunately, uh, that means we're going into a bit of a holding pattern here on Turn 3 Racing Network. We will stay live for you. Um, as I'm getting the word right now from Race Control up top. So, unfortunately, we will have to go back into a holding pattern uh, here on Turn 3 Racing Network. Stay tuned. This race is still coming up. It is still going to be live, um, and we are still going to be racing from Dover, uh, but it will be a moment from now. Um, so just bear with us. We're going to go jump in the new session uh, and go from there where we will not be racing in the dark. Um, and uh, I'll get into a bit of a story once we go back live um, as to why that would not be a good idea. Um, I have seen it happen before, a race going into darkness that should not have gone into darkness, and it does not end well, and it would not end well tonight at Dover. So uh, bear with us. We'll be right back. We're going to go jump into the other, another session. Actually, we'll stay on the air until I, I confirm that the new session's been made. So we'll stay on the air. I'll give you some pre-race coverage uh, regardless here from the Dover Motor Speedway. This is round 11 at Dover Motor Speedway of the OP Racing Throwback Series, the Gen 4 race cars. Back on track again in what has been a very, very fun season. I mean, such an enjoyable season to call. So many different storylines from, you know, the rise of Trey Galgan to the rise of Austin Collins and Christian Schrader and Matt Hayden having a, a quietly really good year um, to Rusty Modesty taking the league by storm to, you know, the main stage, Jimmy Fitzmaurice, the Elmore, Stoney Benfield, the Weavers coming in and making an impact, Jordan Anderson, you know, with a podium finish in his first start in the series, Adam Green, running well and showing you know a lot of consistent improvement as well um, and obviously the boss man Alex Green uh, the head of it all the mind of it all so many storylines across the season how could you forget about, forget about Hunter Carlson our points leader incredible storylines I mean it's really been a fun season it's been a lot of fun to call um, and it's been you know a lot of uh, enjoyable experiences um, and as we ready to get as we're ready to get going uh, for round number 11 I can't help uh, but reflect on that a little bit. Um, we're waiting for the new session to go up again. If you're just joining us, uh, we're going in live in a minute. Uh, we're going to go into a bit of a holding pattern here in, here in just a minute uh, to get into the correct session again. The timing a little bit wrong. You can already tell how dark it is. That's not going to work at Dover. Uh, so we're going to have to go get into a session with daylight, and then we will get down to business here from Dover Motor Speedway in just a moment. Um, I do want to give that little anecdote real quick. Uh, so I was calling a race at Talladega a couple weeks back. Um, and, and when I did, uh, it was in the trucks at Talladega. It was a it was a Monday night race that I always talk about on, on these broadcasts. I always mention uh, that I call um, a little guy series, right, on Monday nights over on PGR Esports. Well, um, 
as part of that series, you know, the time for the session was set in the evening. And again, if you know anything about Talladega Super Speedway and NASCAR, you'll know that it doesn't have lights. Well, um, unfortunately, the the track got dark. There were a few cautions, and uh, we ended up having a you know complete darkness, pitch black darkness, um, where you could not see the cars. The drivers could not see each other, um, and we had to call the race ten laps early. That's what we want to avoid in this session. That's why we're making a new one. That's why we're going to go into a holding pattern here in just a moment. Um, in this time, go ahead and share the link. Subscribe to the Turn Three Racing Network. A lot of great content that I'll get to later. Um, but um, get you know subscribe um, and, and come join us uh, here in just a moment. We go into a holding pattern as we await the new session to be made. It'll be live very shortly. We're going to go right into qualifying. It's not going to be a long break, I promise. Um, we will be back as soon as we can for 200 laps of exciting racing action at the Dover Motor Speedway. Um, and as we get ready to go, I'll try to get a timer up as well to let you know exactly when we'll be back live here on the Turn 3 Racing Network. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Technical difficulties. Unfortunately, yeah, the uh, technology does not always cooperate, and tonight it did not cooperate for us here at Dover. So we're going to go get a new session. We'll be back in a few minutes on the Turn 3 Racing Network for round 11. You're watching the OP Racing Throwback Series on the Turn 3 Racing Network. We'll be right back.
Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in to the virtual day, uh, in daylight this time, Dover Motor Speedway, as we get you prepared for 200 laps in the Gen 4 race cars and round 11 of the OP Racing Throwback Series. Again, my name is Dawson Wise. I'll be taking you through every last minute of this 200-lap affair here tonight in Dover, and it's going to be a good one. I'm excited. I love Dover. This car is going to be awfully fun at the Dover Motor Speedway as we get ready to go just because of how much off-throttle time there's going to be, how much driving the car you have to do, certainly going to be a factor in tonight's race. Uh, we are waiting on one to reconnect, and I'm actually, we're, I believe we're actually waiting on two to connect to the session, so we'll be waiting here for just a couple minutes, uh, but no harm, no foul. Share the link right now. It is Throwback Night in America here on the Turn 3 Racing Network, and we've got all the action for you here live on the Turn 3 Racing Network. And with a minute, about a minute to go, I assume about a minute to go until we advance, possibly a couple extra minutes, uh, we'll take you through the full race prep for tonight's race. Again, 200 laps in the 2001 rules package. Single file restarts, no lucky dogs tonight. you got to get your laps back the hard way. Um, and again, a 200-lap race distance makes for a 200-mile event here tonight. If you missed last week's race in Richmond, it was a good one. Uh, it featured a whole lot of pitch strategy, a bit of a caution-filled chaotic affair late, and Sebastian Marin pulled away to capture his third throwback series win of his career. He won on two mile and a half last season. He adds a short track to his resume as of last week. He is not in the field here tonight in Dover. It's the normal full-time crowd in the field here tonight at Dover Motor Speedway. And as such, we'll go into your point standings here briefly before we get on the grid. Hunter Carlson retains the points lead and stretches it just a little bit. Now a 19-point advantage for Hunter Carlson over Matt Hayden in the six. Christian Strader continues to close that gap. He moves up a spot in the standings to third and has closed the points gap to 39 points. Headed into round number 11 with seven races to go. Strader is within 39 points of your points leader in the championship battle. Cody Eldred falls to fourth in the points. He is 52 points back of Hunter Carlson, and then a steep drop-off from there as fifth place Jordan Anderson is 100, excuse me, 211 points behind our points leaders. So it's become a four-horse race at the front, and all four like to run up front, so there is not much room for error for our top four in points coming into tonight's race. As we get ready to go under the green flag for the first time, you're going to be seeing those guys set the tone. Christian Strader right now provisionally second. Hunter Carlson fourth. Matt Hayden is fifth. Cody Eldred actually is not in the field tonight, so perhaps may become a three-horse race by the time we get to the end of 200 miles here in Dover. And sorry about that. We're receiving the word from up top in the race control tower. Two minutes till the grid. Two minutes till we're on the grid in Dover. If you've got anybody that wants to watch tonight's race, anybody that you know that is supports one of these drivers, tell them it is two minutes till go time at the Dover Motor Speedway, the Monster Mile. And we are getting ready to get this one underway. I cannot wait. Anticipation's been getting heavy all week out of the race we saw in Richmond last week and the points battle we have. It is shaping up to be an all-time ending to this season with four drivers within 52 points of each other with seven races to go. It makes every race mean just a little bit more. About a minute to go until we can get on the grid. We're waiting on one driver to get into the session here and join us on the grid. It'll make for a, an 18-car field in tonight's race. And before we get going, take an opportunity now, again, share the link. Everybody you know that likes racing, likes this kind of racing, that supports one of these drivers, get them in here. It is throwback night in America.
All right, well, let's give that another shot. That was the most chaotic 10 minutes I think I've ever experienced as an Internet user. Uh, the amount of times so that my uh, connection went out, came back, went out, came back, went out, came back. Uh, that was wild, to say the least, to try to go make a fix when it came back. And then as soon as it came back, well, it's broken again, and you have to wait. But nonetheless, here we are. We're going to give this another try. Uh, they did wreck on the initial start, and they are under caution again. This is going to be the second caution of the night, I do believe, uh, on lap number 7 of 200. Trey Galgan, Christian Strader, Adam Green, Hunter Carlson, Matt Hayden, the top five. I was starting to get into saying that we had had some storms uh, in my area over the past 24 hours or so that brought with them high wind, and as such, the risk that the Internet connections would uh, be broken in the area, well, that's exactly what happened to me right there. Must have had a gust outside. Uh, but nonetheless, we are back at it. We're going to try this again. Uh, hopefully, uh, everybody is coming on back. Let me let everybody know that you had watching the stream, that you were sending the stream out to. Let them know the stream is back. And we are going to take this as long as it can go. Now, I will tell you, uh, if that were to happen again, we were to miss another 15 minutes of the race, uh, there's a likely chance the broadcast would be out for the remainder of the night. Um, we'll have to wait and see on that. What I was getting into... Uh, before the wonders of technology so rudely interrupted me, um, was that there will be no broadcast next Thursday night um, for the race at Kansas Motor Speedway, um, as I will be out of town next weekend. So uh, there will be no broadcast next Thursday night. Um, and also following this broadcast, if this one ever gets going, um, go head over to PGR Esports about 10.40 p.m. Eastern, as we get you ready for PGRE Sports Thursday night Super Speedway Series, the Intimidator Super Speedway Series, as we take these cars here, the Gen 4 is the first time ever, to Talladega Super Speedway for a what should be a very high-intensity race. If you ever seen the Daytona Talladega stops on this series, they're a lot of fun, they're high-intensity, and it's a very unique style of racing. So go check that out once we're done here. Nine laps are on the board in Dover. Now that we've had a rough start, we're time to wipe the slate clean and ready to go under the green flag finally on lap number 10. Trey Galgan is your race leader as we get ready to go under the green flag. Isaiah Dupree is in the field tonight. The man fifth in points is back in the field and ready to make a statement, ready to get himself back in this points battle with our top four in points. So Galgan, Strader, Green, Carlson, Hayden, the top five. As we get ready to put them back under the green flag, 191 laps to go here in Dover. The Monster Mile is ready to play host to the throwback series, and here we go. It's going to feel odd calling it this way on lap 10, but we are ready to go racing here in Dover. Round 11 of the throwback series finally is green. Green flag, we're racing again in Dover. Galgan spins the tires right out of the gate. Matt Hayden on Hunter Carlson here for P2. Christian, or excuse me, P4. Christian Strader drives forward to P2 and now will challenge the leader as they come up off the banking. Matt Hayden by Hunter Carlson. That's for fourth. Matt Hayden looking to gain some points on our points leader. Hayden second in points. Needs a good run tonight, as does Christian Strader to try to distance themselves from Hunter Carlson. Trey Galgan, the leader, off turn number four and down the front stretch. Adam Green catches the outside wall and rides it all the way down the front stretch. He'll be sucked into the battle here for fourth. He'll actually make it a three-way battle for third between himself, Hayden, and Hunter Carlson. The Elmores run sixth and seventh. Jimmy Fitzmaurice, eighth, Gary Falco, ninth, and Alex Green runs in tenth. Rusty Modesty, for note, runs 13th, and Austin Collins runs 18th. Battle for the lead. Galgan, straighter. Who will get the better of the other? Strader could really use the win considering where Hunter Carlson's at right now in this race. Strader could use a trip to victory lane to continue to jumpstart his way towards that points battle. Off of four. Lap 12 off the board and 13 goes on it and Galgan and Strader still nose to tail. Matt Hayden is starting to pick up some time. Hayden about a second off this battle for the lead right now and running better lap times. On the back stretch again, Galgan. Continuing to lead straighter, now pulls it to within about a car length. We 
We'll continue to watch this battle for the lead and the battle for third. That is right behind the two leaders. You see Matt Hayden under fire from Adam Green and Hunter Carlson for that third spot. Straighter, nominally better there in three and four. We'll drive right up to the back bumper of Trey Galligan. Does he have room to take a look here into one? No, he does not. He'll hang in line for now in behind the Trey Galgan machine. Galgan pulls it to three car lengths now at the end of the back straightaway and starts to drive away just a little bit from Christian Strader for at least a moment, but not for long. Strader brings it right back. Battle for third is on. Hayden, Green, and Carlson battle for those three spots. The laps will tick by awfully quickly. They're going to run fast times tonight at Dover Motor Speedway. Currently last lap for Galgan, our leader, 23-6-4. Fastest car on the racetrack was Matt Hayden with a 23-5-3. That time the leaders run identical times, and Hayden goes a half a tenth slower. Quickest car on the racetrack was Jimmy Fitzmaurice in the 33 back in the eighth position. We'll continue to watch lap times as the night goes on. That time, really good lap from Trey Galgan over a tenth faster than our second place car, Christian Strader, a tenth quicker than Hunter Carlson, who ran a 23.68. Fastest car on the racetrack that time by Rusty Modesty, a 23.57. Again, they'll continue to tick by awfully quick. Leaders identical again. These laps will... Continue to tick by quick as this race goes on. It's similar to short tracks. They run really fast laps around here. They can carry a lot of speed in the corner. And as such, they are going to rattle laps off the board here tonight. Battle for fourth. Hunter Carlson around Adam Green. He will get that spot. And the points leader now runs position number four. Matt Hayden, again, the quickest car on the racetrack. As he again starts to run down this battle for the lead, which has reformed into a battle for the lead. Schrader drives back within two car lengths. Hayden goes three tenths quicker that time by on lap 21. Matt Hayden, but we're going to call it for a second. Call a pause to the racing as we've had some trouble on the front stretch, and it is Chris Weaver. In the 88, he's running right behind Alex Green, coming off of turn number four, and let's see what happens here to the 88 of Weaver. He gets to the back of Alex Green. They go both go for a slide, and Isaiah Dupree is involved in that as well in the 86. So they both slide down to the inside line and hit the inside wall. which is what brings out the second caution, actually the third caution of the night here at Dover. You'll see the contact right here off of four, right there. And Weaver gets around and then gets a little bit of help there from Isaiah Dupree to help him go all the way around. Take one more look at it before we go back up front, get you ready for the restart. We'll go up top. We'll actually go from the blimp cam. I think this is going to give us a little bit better angle here. And right here's the contact. There it is. Sends the three sideways. The 88 gets a little bit of help right there. He goes sideways. And they're both going to collide with the inside wall. Now, granted, Chris Weaver gets it a little bit tougher right there on the brunt. Of the front end, and Alex Green does pancaking the left side of that car. But nonetheless, both side, both cars spin, both cars hit the inside wall, and it puts us under our third caution flag of the night in Dover. 23 laps on the board, 178 to go here from Dover. We are just getting started, but we were very quickly ticking off laps there.
So we'll see if we can get into a bit of a green flag run here as 23 laps are on the board at Dover. Again, appreciate you joining us. Thanks for spending a little bit of your of your Thursday with us on the Turn 3 Racing Network as we bring you throwback series action from Dover Motor Speedway. Got a fun race in store the rest of the night. Still going to be about 175 laps to go when we go back under the green flag. But we did tick off about 15 right there in pretty short order. So Again, if you missed it earlier, no broadcast for next week's race from Kansas. The series will still race, but there will be no live broadcast here on Turn 3 Racing Network because I will be out of town. But we'll be back for all but one week after that as we near the end of the season here for the OP Racing Throwback Series. Only seven races to go, counting tonight, six after tonight's race ends. We're getting down to it. Getting down to the nitty-gritty of this season. Feels like the season just started, but, man, only seven races to go. Coming into tonight, it, the season has really passed by quickly, and we'll soon be knowing who our Season 2 champion is going to be. But it might take until that final race in Homestead to know for sure. We'll get re-racked and ready to go on lap 26 of 200 here from Dover. It is Trey Galgan, the race leader right now in, uh, at Dover Downs. Christian Schrader runs second. Matt Hayden runs third. Hunter Carlson fourth. Brian Elmore is fifth. Brandon Elmore sixth. Rusty Modesty seventh. Jimmy Fitzmaurice eighth. Davey Weaver ninth. And Stoney Benfield rounds out the top ten. So here we go, 175 laps to go from Dover. The pace car will take the hard left turn. And away we go once again from the Dover Motor Speedway. Trey Galgan and Christian Schrader battle for the lead for that last run. Will they do it again right here? Let's find out. Galgan into the restart zone. Green flag is back in the air. And away we go towards turn number one in Dover. Galgan a nice start. Three car length lead over Schrader into one. Now Matt Hayden will hound the 12. That's for second, but not for very long. Hayden gets up the hill in turn number one and goes backwards. He's all the way back to sixth. He might lose seventh to Rusty Modesty here in a moment. Schrader pulls up to the back of Trey Galgan. Looks a lane higher. That's going to be the first time we've seen anybody try to go up high and get a little bit of a run, and it looks like it works for him. Here comes Christian Schrader, and Hunter Carlson's in the mix as well. Straighter in the tire tracks of Galgan there in one and two. Might have to go a little bit higher here, get out of the dirty air and try something different. When we get down the back, stretch it into three and four. The straighter look a lane higher again? No. Drives it back to the bottom. So does Hunter Carlson. All three cars under a blanket here off turn number four. Trey Galgan leads lap 27, 28 are on the board. Brian and Brent Elmore are on the move as well. Fourth and fifth. Matt Aiden has fallen to sixth position. Strader looked around for speed, looked about a half lane up. Does he find anything here off of the back straightaway? No, he does not. Stays about a car length off the bumper of Trey Galgan. Hunter Carlson about a car length off the bumper of Strader. Off to number four down the front stretch again. 28 down here in Dover. 29 are on the board. And the Elmores continue to run down this battle for the lead. The 39, the 31 showing a ton of speed in the early goings here from Dover. Couple cars driving up the hill, trying to find some speed on exit. But nothing really for these first two cars yet in Strader. And Trey Galgan. Strader back to the rear bumper of Trey Galgan. Only a half a car length back as they roll again through three and four. Strader trying to find the pass because this is starting to turn into a bit of a hornet's nest here at the front of the field. They're all under a blanket. 
Make it six, seven, potentially eight cars all under a blanket as Jimmy Fitzmaurice has entered this battle. And this is seven cars within a second of each other and Dover of all places. Lap 32 on the board, 169 laps to go, 168 when we come back by the start-finish line. Again, the laps will tick by quickly. Don't blink. You might miss something here in Dover, especially if this race enters into a green flag run. So expect that to start here as the cars get more spread out besides our front nine cars as Stoney Benfield has entered this battle for the lead. Uh, expect the pit, the cautions to kind of let up a little bit and us to enter a green flag run as these cars get more and more strung out. Galgan starts to drive away. He's put about five car lanes on Christian Strader, who's put about four car lanes on Hunter Carlson in third. Brian and Brent Elmore firing on Hunter Carlson for that position. Matt Aiden under fire for six. Jimmy Fitzmaurice, Stoney Benfield, the latest two to enter the fray, and Benfield actually is already up to eight. The faster passer was position number three in practice. Had a really fast car in a practice session, and is showing so far he's got race pace as well. Up off turn number four, lap 35 goes on the board, and we'll check lap times for the first time on this run. Galgan 23.73 fastest, but Matt Hayden runs a 23.71, and Benfield runs a 23.69. They are the fastest two cars on the racetrack as of right now, the 6 and the 75. Galgan, though, starts to put a little bit of a gap on our second-place car straighter again. It's a bit of a pile-up back from him from about fourth on back. As you could tell from about the fourth position on back, it's turning into a bit of a hornet's nest as Galgan sets sail. Hundred and sixty four laps to go here in Dover. Galgan, Strader, Carlson, Elmore, and Elmore in our top five. Brian fourth, Brent fifth. But that's about where that hornet's nest begins back around Brian Elmore. And we'll take a look back here for a moment. As the hornet's nest continues to grow. The bottom really the only viable line, at least right now, but perhaps that changes throughout the race. Matt Hayden to the bottom. He wants fifth. He'll get it through the middle of the corner. How much drive off can Brent Elmore get to counter that? Enough to hold the spot, or at least hold defensive position, but I believe Matt Hayden will get that spot down here in turns three and four, and he does. It'll be Rusty Modesty coming through trying to get sixth on Brent Elmore, but I believe he might slide in line. Nope, Modesty is able to drive it off the hill and keep it to his inside, so here comes Modesty for sixth, and then Stoney Benfield will try to come on through for seventh along with the Rusty Modesty machine. Elmore. Now under fire up here for fourth by Matt Hayden. Matt Hayden, one of the fastest cars on the speedway right now. Hayden, half a car length back of Brian, Brent Elmore. Brian Elmore, excuse me. Brent Elmore under fire now from Stoney Benfield. That'll be for the seventh position. Hayden and Brent Elmore. Brian Elmore jump up the racetrack looking for some grip. Matt Hayden has it, and he's got some serious speed here early in the going of this one. About a fifth of the way through today's race, 20% 20, 20 complete. As 40 laps go on and off the board this time by Matt Hayden hounding the 39 of Brian Elmore. For that fourth position, Elmore starting to diamond the corner a little bit. Not much doing up front. Strader is held tough right about eight-tenths of a second behind Trey Galgan. Matt Hayden is going to have to get past the Brian Elmore machine as he starts to lose a little bit of time and now ventures way up the racetrack trying to find some speed. As this car on the track that time by was Christian Strader with a 23.95 and Austin Collins with a 23.98. He's had to kind of tear his way through the field. He was stuck in traffic for a long part of that run. Fastest car on the racetrack that time by 
is going to be Christian Strader again by a tenth over our leader, Trey Galgan. Ooh, Matt Hayden tail whips the outside wall. Has to get out of the gas and will almost lose that car. As such, we'll head back up here. Stoney Benfield finally got past Brent Elmore. That is for the eighth position, so the faster passer is on the move a little bit here. Again, one of the fastest cars in practice. Got logged in the back on the first caution of the night. And now he's trying to bring himself forward. He's all the way up to eighth, trying to gain a little bit more time. But Trey Galgan has set sail. He is driving away from the field. And so far, putting it to him, Isaiah Dupree, one of the biggest movers in the field. He's up to ninth, just inside the top ten. Same with Austin Collins. He currently is, is seventh. Fastest car on the track last time around the speedway was actually Collins with a 23.36. Almost a quarter of the way through, if you can believe that. We are almost a quarter of the way through this one in Dover. Galgan continues to lead and now puts a little bit more of a lead on Christian Schrader. The battle has once again heated up. That's for fourth. Matt Hayden has once again run down Brian Elmore and now goes to the bottom of the speedway to try to get around him. It's a nice drive off of turn number two. Might have the position here in three. He will dive to the inside. Matt Hayden wants position number four, and he will... Not get it. Big fight by Brian Elmore up off the corner. Hayden has to bail, but does get past Brian Elmore, and Modesty gets by him as well. Modesty's up to fifth. Modesty, Collins, Benfield, the men on the move so far in tonight's race. You see Austin Collins starting to work his way into this battle for the race lead, or excuse me, battle for the fourth position. As he has worked his way up from the back of the field, and Quickly made his presence felt here with these three cars in front of him. Hayden ventures up the racetrack and tries to find some speed. Will he find any here off of two? Maybe found a little bit. Now starts to run down our points leader, Hunter Carlson. That would be a really welcome pass for Matt Hayden. Should he be able to make it? Austin Collins is really driving the center of the corner back there in seventh. He's about to get the pass completed on Brian Elmore here for that sixth spot. Fastest car on Dover Motor Speedway last time by was Stoney Benfield in the 75. He runs eighth right now. Starting to run down this group in front of him, though. 52 laps complete here in Dover as Trey Galgan continues to lead the way. And he's put almost two seconds on the rest of the field. Now, Rusty Modesty, Austin Collins, Stoney Binfield, if they can get back forward, might have something to say about that here in a few moments. But for now, it is all Trey Galgan at the front. Matt Hayden has caught Hunter Carlson. This is a battle of points importance. As Hayden's looking to gain some ground on Hunter Carlson going forward. He will dive to the inside and he will grab third here in turns one and two. Carlson looking up the speedway for some speed. Hayden puts a nose ahead off turn two. They almost come together. Modesty almost going to take advantage but only gets to the bottom of Carlson and Hayden will start to drive away. Matt Hayden now has some clean track. Austin Collins going to come with Rusty Modesty. They'll get fourth and fifth here in turn one. And you know Matt Hayden likes to see that. Fastest car on the speedway that time by Trey Galgan and Isaiah Dupree.
145 to go from Dover, and these laps, like I said, are going to really tick away quickly when we start getting down to business and the wrecking ends. They're going to get down to business awfully quickly, and that has certainly been the case tonight. Collins versus Modesty. That is for fourth. Austin Collins is on the move. Fastest car on the speedway last time by, though, was our second-place car, Christian Strader, and he has started to catch Trey Galgan in a little bit of a hurry. We'll keep it here for now, looking at Matt Hayden as Austin Collins. Actually, we're going to go back here to this battle as Modesty tries to cross over. Collins able to fend it off and continue forward. Don't look now, but here comes Isaiah Dupree. He gets seventh there from Brian Elmore and has all of a sudden cut his way through the entire field. Stoney Benfield continues to watch on. He's trying to catch this battle as well to gain himself some more spots. Dupree already went by the 75. Collins way up the speedway in three and four. Not sure if that was intentional. wonder what kind of speed difference it's going to give him here. Down the front stretch, my goodness, he gives him a serious run off the corner. He's going to jump to the inside of Matt Hayden. This will be for third. If he can get there here off turn number two, he'll be awfully close. He'll have to turn it off the left rear quarter panel, but tuck back in line. They both venture up the racetrack for some speed here in three and four. Collins drives down the hill and right up alongside Matt Hayden's machine. He'll clear him into one. Austin Collins is on his horse and moving right now on lap 60. Collins will try to now run down our two leaders who are separated by about 1.42 seconds. Fastest cars on the speedway that time again, Dupree and Strader. The fastest two cars on the racetrack. 1.2 seconds, the gap now between our two leaders. Strader has cut almost a second off of the lead established here by Trey Galgan. As Austin Collins tries to cut away at the lead, not doing so quite yet, but runs in third comfortably right now. Strader is within a second of our leader. All of a sudden, you look down, and he has cut the lead away. Three-tenths quicker that time as pit stops have begun. Brent Elmore, Jordan Anderson, and Chris Weaver, the first three on pit road. Adam Green will see the lead after going a lap down. The first pit cycle of the night here in Dover is underway on lap 62. Galgan being run down by Christian Strader. It's eight-tenths of a second through one and two. You can visibly see the gap getting smaller back to the 12. The Kodak Dodge of Christian Strader. Eight tenths here as they head off into three and four. Who seeds the lead first of these two lead cars? Neither that time by. Bo Benham is on pit road. Davey Weaver is on pit road as well. Stoney Benfield is on pit road. as well as Jimmy Fitzmaurice, so pit stops are definitively underway. And here comes Trey Galgan, your race leader. He'll cede the lead to Christian Strader. He will come to pit road. Does anybody behind him decide to pit? Austin Collins stays out. Matt Hayden, Rusty Modesty on pit road this time around, as well as Brian Elmore. And at least four cars out on the racetrack, Strader, Collins, Carlson, and Dupree. Straighter down through the gears. He will come to pit road this time by on lap 65. Got to watch the pit road mistake. And he gets it down to speed. Austin Collins will bring his number 46 Al Smith Dodge in behind him. And Hunter Carlson, our points leader, will pit as well. So all but Isaiah Dupree have pit for the first cycle of pit stops on lap 66. Dupree the final one off pit road as we await to see where Trey Galgan will come out of all of this. He's off pit road now. Strader just now hitting his pit box. Matt Hayden is off pit road as well as Rusty Modesty. And Isaiah Dupree brings his car to pit road this time by. Very slow, 35 mile an hour pit road speed is not ideal. Uh, here at Dover, if you're trying to be fast off pit road, Strader coming now. Here comes Galgan. He'll get around him, but I don't think the gap's going to be as much as Galgan perhaps wants it to be. 
Straight are going to try to get up to speed. It's going to be about probably three seconds by the time all is said and done. Dupree is on pit road as well as Adam Green. The last two cars to pit as part of this cycle. And just as I said, he wanted to avoid the pit road mistake. It's a mistake for the 12 of Christian Schrader and costly on two notes. Number one in tonight's race and number two in the ultimate championship fight. A tough, tough break on the first round of pit stops for Christian Schrader who has lost all of that ground he had made up. He loses it here on the first pit stop of the night. So, resetting the field. Trey Galgan is now the leader. He'll put Christian Schrader a lap down. He might put him two laps down with a hold penalty here under this green flag run. That's a tough, tough break. It's going to be really hard to come back from for Christian Schrader. Quite possibly... Going to be a mistake he physically cannot come back from. He's now down two laps. And just a really costly mistake in terms of the points battle. He's been having such a good few weeks to get back in the points battle and now suffers another setback. He might go three laps down here. And he continues to sit in his pit box. So Christian Strader, one of the more competitive cars on the night, he will go a lap. He will go multiple laps down. He's three laps down. He'll go four down. And as Galgan passes him here, he finally comes off pit road. A really costly penalty for Christian Strader. Got a lot of time to try to recover, but with no lucky dog, he'll have to get them all back the hard way. Not saying that's impossible, but not a favorable situation for the driver of the 12. So Trey Galgan now leads the race and not a ton of competition right now for that spot so he will comfortably ride in the first position. We'll reset the rest of the field for you now and go through a full field rundown. Why not? Trey Galgan the leader here on lap 72. Austin Collins is second. Matt Hayden is third. Followed by Rusty Modesty in the fourth position. Stoney Benfield has made his way up to fifth. Great cycle for the driver of the 75. Hunter Carlson, the points leader, is sixth, but he's being challenged for that position by Isaiah Dupree. So we'll watch this battle here for a moment. And there's Christian Schrader. And I'll tell you this. If anybody were to be able to do a Mark Martin and drive themselves back from three laps down, I would not put it past the driver of the 12, Christian Schrader. He's had unreal pace similar to our leader and actually was faster than our leader on the tail end of that run and I would not be surprised to see him be able to drive himself back into a spot where he could theoretically get back on the lead lap. And we'll try that right now. Carlson runs eighth. Brian Elmore runs in ninth. Chris Weaver runs, uh, excuse me, Hunter Carlson runs seventh with Elmore in eighth, Chris Weaver ninth, and Davey Weaver rounding out the top ten. Bo Benham runs in the 11th position. Brent Elmore in 12th. Jimmy Fitzmaurice in 13th. Jordan Anderson, the last car in the lead lap in 14th. It's Alex Green that runs in 15th. Gary Falco runs 16th. Adam Green 17th. And then Christian Strader. Galgan about to hit lap traffic for the first time tonight. And I'll tell you what, Austin Collins, Matt Hayden, Rusty Modesty, and Stoney Benfield are all making up some ground on the driver of the 49. And that's going to help him really make up ground. Caution flag as Alex Green has gone for a slide to bring out our fourth caution of the night on lap 77. Oh, not sure what happened here. Car got out from under him. Brian Elmore gets to the back of him, slides him sideways. Not sure what happened on that one as he came to a sliding stop. Let's look again. Let's see here off turn number four. What happens to the three of Alex Green? I don't really see the wheel moving in there. 
Not sure what happens here to the three, but nonetheless. It's a tough break for Alex Green, who then comes back up. He is going to collect the Brian Elmore machine, and they both go for a slide. Doesn't look like considerable damage on either car, which is a good sign for both, but nonetheless, a tough break for Alex Green and for Brian Elmore. We'll go on board with Alex Green. Let's see what happens here under our fourth caution of the night. Let's see if we can kind of figure out what happens here to the three. Oh, man. Looked like the car may have just slipped out a little bit. The rear tire spun going into one. It drifted down the hill. And unfortunately, when he tried to get out of the gas, it kind of just continued to go left. And he had to come back up on the banking and unfortunately collects Chris Weaver, or excuse me, um, Brian Elmore. Speaking of Brian Elmore, he's going to stay out and inherit the lead under this caution flag as several drivers come back for second pit stops. That is going to help out Christian Strader, who now is only two laps down. It actually worked out really well for him where he was on the speedway. So now he gets one of those laps back as part of staying out to get a wave around. So Strader... He's going to need a couple more cautions. This would be one of the crazier comeback stories I've ever seen, but he's got the first one back, and he's got 120 laps to get the other two laps back. It's boating really well for Christian Strader. We'll see what he can do with it. And see if he can continue this comeback trail and get right back into this race. Hundred and twenty two laps to go to be hundred and twenty to go when we get back under the green flag here in Dover in just a moment. It'll be Brian Elmore that leads the way. You'll see Strader, Adam Green, and Gary Falco all take their wave arounds right here. I think. Well, maybe not. I thought they would as being in front of the leaders, but I guess not. So here we go. Strader will be second on the inside here with the leaders. He'll have to get that one back the hard way. Hope he gets a caution to fall his way and start the comeback process. As we get ready to go back to the green flag, 120 laps to go, 80 complete here at Dover. Brian Elmore for the first time tonight leads the way. And away we go again. Into the restart zone, 120 laps to go in Dover. It's just starting to get good. As they come back into the Geico restart zone, and Elmore gets a nice jump. Starts to drive away, but not for very long. Here comes Trey Galgan. Now he has to navigate the traffic. Will he be able to do so here? He's going to have to be patient. Elmore up the hill. Green on the bottom side of the hill. Going to battle him hard. And here comes Christian Strader. He shot out of the cannon into this battle. For the lead, here comes Trey Galgan. Strader in tow. Galgan will inherit the lead here off turn four. And Strader will be hot on his heels, trying to get one of those laps back. He'll have to make the pass quickly here on Galgan, who's on fresh tires. He's going to have to go make the pass pretty quickly for second. Here comes Austin Collins. Galgan, oh man, Adam Green almost rolled up the hill right there on Galgan. It's going to slow up the race leader. And here comes Strader. Strader, like a shot out of a cannon. He'll go up the hill in one and two and try to find some speed. Galgan 
turns Adam Green right in front of Strader, who gets into the wall big time. Austin Collins, Matt Hayden, and other leaders are involved as Adam Green goes for a slide, and this is a big time wreck with implications at the front of the field. And we are on lap 83, and things just got interesting. Adam Green was in front of the leaders, and Galgan, when I told you he needed to be a little bit patient, I think he might have been a little bit impatient here. Let's see. Coming off turn number two. Just tries to follow his normal line, and Green is slow in front of him. He gets in the back of the triple seven and spins him around. And Galgan's actually going to pretty heavily collect the outside wall there. I thought Galgan got a lot less of that than he actually did. Then Strader hits the wall, and a couple of our leader lead cars behind him get involved. Austin Collins gets a pretty considerable hit. Christian Strader is heavily damaged. Matt Hayden has some damage. You'll see up ahead the wreck begin with Galgan and Adam Green. and Focus now on their lead, lead lap cars that get involved in this. I mean, they wrecked right at the front of the field. Watch Galgan right here pancake the outside wall. Pretty considerable hit there for the race leader. He'll have some damage to be repaired. Strader gets up in the air. Big hit for him in the 12. Almost goes up and over. Same for Austin Collins. He gets his rear tires up off the ground. And Matt Hayden collects the outside wall. So, wow. Our leaders involved in an incident here with over 100 laps to go, and that shakes up the field immensely. Let's check it from one more angle. I should go from up above, and you'll see the leaders get collected right here. Big hits for Collins and Schrader, who both have come back to pit road to get some of this fixed. Adam Green has big damage as well. Dupree, Elmore, and others get really lucky in that to not get any involvement. Oh, wow. Almost a second incident there with Hunter Carlson. In fact, was there a second incident? Yes, there was. I didn't see this the first time. Carlson goes for a slide. Jordan Anderson coming on. Is on the brakes, but still gets into the left side of Hunter Carlson on our secondary incident. And another quick caution, and this time it shakes up the running order. The new leader in Dover is Chris Weaver in the 88. Davey Weaver is second, and Brent Elmore runs third. Then it's Galgan, who has a fresh race car. He's taking the fast repair, so has Matt Hayden. Rusty Modesty is sixth. Brian Elmore is seventh, and Benfield Benham. And Jordan Anderson, Hunter Carlson, who ran well for most of the first part of this race, is 11th. Dupree is 12th. Fitzmaurice is 13th. Collins is 14th. Alex Green, 15th. Gary Falco, 16th. Adam Green, 17th. And Christian Schrader is 18th. So just when you thought it could not get any more unlucky for Christian Schrader, unfortunately they wreck right in front of him. And despite his best efforts, unable to get around the incident on the inside and gets involved and will stay three laps down. In fact, he's going to go four laps down. We're going back to green on lap 88 of 200, almost halfway home here from the uh, from the Bristol Motor Speedway. Wow, from the Dover Motor Speedway. I'll tell you what, when they changed it from Dover, uh, from what, uh, what was it before? I 
think it might have been Dover International Speedway to Dover Motor Speedway. It just threw me off so bad because they're Bristol and Dover are similar in form. Now they're similar in name as well. Green flag is back in the air, and away we go. We're going we're gonna to crash on the restart. They keep it together, but that was Galgan again. Adam Green got in the side of Trey Galgan. And allows Chris Weaver to kind of drive away a little bit. Chris Weaver enjoying the lead here at Dover through the pit cycle and through the chaos at the front. And all of a sudden, Chris and Davey Weaver are off to the races. Galgan picking through traffic behind them. He'll have to work that traffic to get back into this one. And with Austin Collins, he'll have to work through a, considerable, a considerably more amount of traffic. As Galgan continues to get held up there by, I believe, Brent Elmore, they continue to battle for the third spot. Chris and Davey Weaver continue to lead the race. Gary Falco, Alex Green also separate them from Galgan, so a couple picks here for Galgan to work through. Modesty and Hayden both go around Elmore. That's going to be for fourth and fifth. Austin Collins is all the way back in 13th. He'll try to make up some of the ground he lost. As we get going on this next run, Alex Green very loose off turn four. This is going to be a hornet's nest here at the front when Galgan gets here. When Galgan, Hayden, and Modesty get into this battle, this is going to become a serious hornet's nest. And they are on the way and on the way quickly, as is Stoney Benfield. The 75 quietly has started to pass some cars and now got through that wreck. Davy Weaver pounds the outside wall. He's big time into the outside wall. He'll try not to spin off of it, but stays up. He's going to stay way up there against the safer barrier. Coming off turn number two. Lost a ton of ground right there to the rest of these cars and will now file in in fifth. Chris Weaver leads, but I imagine not for very long. Here comes Galgan, and he's got a massive head of steam. He'll go underneath Weaver. Alex Green's on the apron, and again we have a situation of lap cars in front of Galgan that are going to cause him some problems. Hornet's Nest here behind the leader. One car off the speedway. It's Brent Elmore, and he's going for a spin. He spun it on the apron. Green flag will stay in the air. Stoney Benfield now in a bit of a hornet's nest back there, and for the lead, it's a serious hornet's nest here at the front. Galgan. Hounded here by Matt Hayden. Hayden up the up the hill, trying to drive off the corner, and he's got the drive, but he's going to have to lift out of it. He's going to have to try to pick which lane he wants here on Trey Galgan. He'll stay behind him for now and possibly look up the hill again in one and two. Battle for the lead is on half, almost halfway home here from Dover. Galgan, Hayden, Modesty, under a blanket. With 105 to go again, Hayden goes up the second lane. He'll drive off the corner. This time he might grab the quarter panel. If not, he's going to cross over. Alex Green in the way just in front of the leaders. Where's Alex Green going to go in all this? He goes second lane for now. The leaders will be on him by the time they get to the exit of three and four. Hayden another try at the leader, Trey Galgan. In the wall further behind is Chris Weaver. Brian Elmore slowly working his way into this battle as well in fourth. Excuse me, in fifth. Hayden again a drive off the corner. Three cars under a blanket here at the front of the field. Stoney Benfield is trying to gain some spots for the back. He was ninth and looking for more. For the race lead, can Hayden grab the right recorder panel off a of two? Not quite, and he gets the wall. Galgan to the inside of Alex Green. That'll be for a lap here. I believe Alex Green tailing the lead lap right now. He is, and here comes Matt Hayden. Galgan got pinned, and here comes the six. Incredible stuff here at the front of the field. For the race lead as Alex Green hangs on to the lead lap for dear life. And what he's doing is allowing Matt Hayden to get back into this, into this battle for the lead. Galgan has to run the bottom. Hayden able to rotate that car, roll it up to the top side, and really drive up to the back bumper of Galgan. Benfield's on the move further back. He's up to seventh. And closing on the leaders. Galgan again will try to get by Alex Green. No siree. Alex Green proving to be a thorn in the side of Galgan. He'll go to the top side of the racetrack in three and four. And will go a lap down. He'll drive back close to Trey Galgan. 
But no cigar, almost comes off the wall and collects Matt Hayden, who goes to the apron, now has to roll it off the bottom of the racetrack, and they will get by Alex Green with no problem. And Galgan starts to drive away. He weathers the storm for now from Matt Hayden, who now has some clean track as well. In behind him in second. I think Hayden might be the faster car. He pulls it back to within two tenths. Benfield again trying to be on the move further back. He's going to go around Hunter Carlson. That'll be for sixth. He and Carlson will battle for the position. As Benfield drives it hard off the corner, we'll keep it here for a moment on the 75. He might pick up two for one here in three and four as Carlson's into the outside wall. At halfway, our points leader suffered some serious problems. And he is laboring that car around the top side of the racetrack. He misses pit road and has serious damage to the two machine. Carlson now will try to labor that car around for the lead up front. New leader, the Viagra for Taurus. Matt Hayden to the front with 99 to go. And with possibly only one to two pit stops looming, this could be a race ender. Matt Hayden trying to drive away, trying to get the elusive victory on a night when he desperately could use it. With Eldred not in the field, Strader suffering issues, and Hunter Carlson into the outside wall. Hayden, a prime opportunity to capitalize and make this points battle increasingly intense going forward. 97 to go. Back to the inside comes Trey Galgan for the race lead. Hayden will try to pinch him to the bottom of the racetrack here in one and two. Who gets the better drive off? Rusty Modesty's in this battle as well. Back to the lead goes Trey Galgan. Incredible stuff. Carlson is back in 15th, and he's sitting on the pit lane. Has he called it a night? No, he's going to sit on pit road. But he may be stuck with that damage. He may be trying to repair, and he's going to go multiple laps down. Matt Hayden, this is a massive opportunity for him tonight now. Insane developments here in the last 25 laps at Dover. Galgan back to the lead, and now we settle down for a second. By the way, Stoney Benfield has driven all the way to fifth position. He's closing on Brian Elmore for the sixth or for the fourth position. So Stoney Benfield trying to complete the comeback for him as well, get himself in a really good spot as he continues to try to run down the leaders. Carlson now all the way back, credited with 17th on the racetrack, and he's gone multiple laps down. Fastest car on the racetrack last time by is your sixth place car. That is Isaiah Dupree. That time by, still Dupree, a 24.05. The leader's 24.23. So Dupree may not be out of this yet. A lap by Gary Falco. Hayden starting to close in again. Falco will get the outside wall. Off turn number four. The battle for fourth is about to be underway as Stoney Benfield has run down Brian Elmore for the fourth position. Isaiah Dupree has run both of them down, though, for fourth and fifth. This is outstanding stuff at Dover Motor Speedway. 92 laps remaining. Whoa, big-time slide there for Matt Aiden. Galgan now starts to drive away. He's put about half a second between himself and Matt Hayden. Dupree has gotten by Benfield for fifth. He'll now try to go by Elmore. That'll be for fourth. Austin Collins has driven all the way back to seventh position. Here we go. This will be for fourth. Isaiah Dupree as Austin Collins looms in the rear view. Three wide for a moment with Falco, Elmore, and Dupree. Dupree to the bottom of the racetrack. Can he get by Elmore for fourth? He can. Isaiah Dupree is the man on the move. Ninety laps to go from Dover. Probably at least one pit stop left. It might be two. It might only be the one. Going green with 120 laps to go. We saw guys go about. Well, I think it's actually gonna be 50 laps. If it's 50 laps, then yeah, we still have two pit stops to go. From Dover, you'll have the money stop late in the race where somebody could potentially flip the strategy on its head. Galgan leads as we finally get an opportunity to calm things down here in Bristol. Or, well, I did it again. Here in Dover. 
Finally a chance for everybody to take a breath and settle in here for a long green flag run after some fantastic racing. 88 laps to go here from Dover. These will start to really tick off quickly as the leaders run really good times. Currently in the 24s as we run right now. Fastest car on the racetrack was your race leader, but not by very much. Galgan really good on these long runs so far. Now, as you see the tires get older, you will probably see that top line start to come in a little bit more on older tires. You saw it earlier with Christian Strader. He was able to run down Galgan, who's been running the bottom most of the evening. And as his tires got older, the bottom gets less and less profitable. We'll see if Matt Hayden can replicate that success running in the middle of the racetrack behind the race leader. So far, uh, has yet to work. Hayden's going to get the wall there as well. What got Galgan last time was pitch strategy. What almost got him last week was pitch strategy. Or excuse me, what almost got um, Sebastian Marin was pitch strategy. So they're hoping to not have to replicate that tonight. They're hoping, Craig Galgan's hoping he can learn from what Marin did last week on that pit stop and be able to go ahead and go win the race without any issue. Clouds are on the racetrack now. Not sure that's going to affect anything. Track temp down to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And Galgan is now undisputed as the fastest car on the speedway. With 84 laps to go, he's looking to replicate his dominant win in Michigan and his win in Bristol a few weeks ago to put his third win of the year on the board. I don't think he's going to be able to get back into this points battle uh, this season. I believe he's not made quite the amount of starts that he needs to be in the points battle. Yeah, he is a considerable amount off of our points leaders, but nonetheless, looking at the very least to be a thorn in their side. The man who's set to profit the most from this race is Matt Hayden. Hunter Carlson is multiple laps down. I believe he's three laps down, three or four laps down in the 17th position. Christian Strader, second in points. Or excuse me, third in points is in the 18th position, even more laps down than that. And Cody Eldred, like I said, is not in the field tonight, so... Matt Hayden stands to gain a lot if he can finish inside the, even the top five. He could pull this to within single digits. Obviously, would like to finish where he is right now in second. And that would gain him about 15 points on the points leader, make this a four-point swing. A four-point gap, should I say, a 15-point swing on our points leader. 80 laps to go. They're really ticking off quickly here now in Dover. As just not a lot of time left in this one. As Galgan has pulled away, first round of pit stops here is underway. Adam Green is on pit road. Chris Weaver, Jordan Anderson, Brent Elmore uh, are all on pit road this time by. Davey Weaver is coming to pit road as well, map 122. If Hayden and Modesty and company want to flip this track position, they would pit right now. Let's see if they do that. Hayden going to stay on the speedway. So is Modesty. In fact, none of the leaders. Uh, Brian Elmore, sorry, excuse me, will be the first of our lead cars to come to pit road. Again, the more time you lose, I just would stand that you'd go ahead and come to pit road and short pit Galgan and maybe try to flip the track position on its head. We'll see if Matt Hayden... And company decided to do that this time by no sign of two, three, or four coming to pit road. Same with Austin Collins, staying with Stoney Benfield. They'll all stay on the speedway. Galgan leads just outside of 75 laps to go, which means 
There is still one more pit stop left after this one, assuming Galgan cannot go the next 15 or so laps. Even if he can, I think he need to get to about 50 to go, and I don't think they're going to get to that. Bo Benham is on pit road this time by. So is Alex Green, and so is Jimmy Fitzmaurice. All three of, of them are on pit road this time around the speedway. We await the leader, Trey Galgan. I believe Rusty Modesty is coming to pit road this time by, and he will cede that position. He'll come to pit road and be the first one of our lead cars on the pit lane. Trey Galgan starting to lose some time. That might be the sign he needs to pit, but now Hayden loses a bunch there in one and two. See if Matt Hayden brings that car to pit road this time by because Galgan's coming to pit road. And Hayden will follow him, and so will Dupree. No, he will not. Dupree will stay on the speedway. Austin Collins is going to hit the pit barrels. Collins into the pit barrels. He's got big damage aboard the 46. And he might have just ended his night. Modesty off pit road and might have been caught speeding right there. Dupree still the only car on the speedway that has not yet come to pit road, at least on this cycle of pit stops. You can see the difference that fresh tires going to make trouble. Around goes Brian Elmore in the 39, and the caution flag's going to come out right in the middle of pit stops. And, boy, that shakes some things up. As everybody is caught one lap down. And this is going to be really interesting to see how this pans out now. As that caution came out at a really bad time for the race leaders. I believe they'll still be potentially in front of the leader here, Dupree. Dupree's got to come to pit road. But they're still, I think, going to be trapped a lap down. Wow. So they're going to go around the pace car. They may still all be on the lead lap. But for several drivers, that is going to take them likely out of contention for tonight's race and trap many a lap down. Dupree will come to pit road, and they got to beat. The leaders have to beat him off pit road. So if Dupree comes off pit road before the leaders, they are going to be trapped a lap down. Modesty is going to get back on the lead lap. We know that for sure. Let's see if Galgan and company will as well. They are back to the field. Try not to wreck each other, but back to the field. And now they will all get back on the tail end of the lead lap. And they will beat Dupree off pit road, so they should theoretically all get their laps back. Now everybody from Chris Weaver down to Bo Benham will be trapped a lap down here under this caution. Unfortunately, nothing they can do. But the rest of the lead pack should be able to go back around the pace car and get their at least one of their laps back under this another caution flag with 70 laps to go. We'll keep an eye right here on Rusty Modesty. We'll see if they let him go See, they let him go around the pace car here when they come off turn number four. Dupree is not going around them. not going to get wave arounds. Oh, it's not one to go yet, so. <laughs> well, all right, forget I said that. Let's wait until it's actually one to go.
Modesty, I believe, may have been bitten for speeding. So, a tough break there for Rusty Modesty. I believe he does get the speeding penalty, so he may still be trapped a lap down. We may end up with only four cars on the lead lap. It may be Dupree, Galgan, Hayden, Collins that are the only lead lap cars left. And Dupree now has the freshest tires in the field. You're going to be able to make one more pit stop here and make it the rest of the way. It'll probably come somewhere around lap 180. Or you may split this stage in half. Let's see. Will these guys get to go around the pace car? No, they will not. They will get to pull to the... Well, maybe they will. Hold on. They will not. But Dupree is going to start way at the tail end of the lap machines. So the only way this works... Realistically here for Galgan, Hayden, and Collins... Is if a quick caution comes out. Or if Dupree is held up so much by the lap cars that... These three can make up the entire length of the speedway to get back to Dupree. He's at the end of a very long line. Keep that in mind. He's at the tail end of the bottom line. Look at how far back the 86 is back there, the yellow car. Third from last in the line. We're going to keep it here for a quick moment to make sure these guys get off okay, and then we're going to go back and look at Isaiah Dupree. And a wonky race startup coming from Dover. Green flag is in the air, and we're back underway. And Isaiah Dupree is going to be the guy to watch the three cars get away quickly. And Dupree now has to work through a hornet's nest. And those three up front just have to run away. Focus less on passing each other and more on making up ground while it's going to be tough for Dupree to make any passes. And if you're Dupree, just you can give them a little time here. You got a 20 second lead. You don't have to force the issue. You can ride and chill for a little bit because they're not very close to you yet. Right now, he's picking them off one by one. Picked off Brian Elmore. Now, look for Brent Elmore. Oh, but Adam Green spinning in front of him, and Dupree's going to get collected. Isaiah Dupree, the race leader, is into the inside retaining wall. He'll maintain the lead, but that brings back into the race Trey Galgan, Austin Collins, Matt Hayden, and Rusty Modesty. As Modesty got past Dupree when the caution flag flew, he will be able to, I assume... Get his way back on a lead lap. Dupree will come to pit road. We'll go back and take a look at it. Oh, they saw it live on your screen. Happened right as we got back here to Isaiah Dupree. And it's coming off of turn number four. Watch Adam Green in the bottom lane, the triple seven. As he starts to slide sideways. And he ends up going around right in front of Dupree, who then gets hit by Rusty Modesty. And goes for a slide. He's going to back it into the inside wall. Watch again from a different angle. Green got loose. Dupree had to lift. And Modesty, not much you can do coming up off the corner like that, gets in the back of the 86. Spins him around, and Dupree catches the inside wall right here on the inside of the front straightaway. And sustains some damage.
going to go on board with Isaiah Dupree as he started to see all this unfold in front of him. And unfortunately, it ends in sparks for the 86. You're on board with Isaiah Dupree. Fortunate turn of events for the 86 machine. Now he is able to stay on the lead lap and actually will recycle out second. Galgan Collins, Modesty, all come to pit road. Hayden stays out to try to eat the track position, flip it on its head, and get to the lead here on what is sure to be a chaotic restart. That brings Galgan Collins and Hayden back into the race. Modesty will still be stuck at the tail end of the lead lap when we go back under the green flag. We should go want to go right here when we pass the start finish line, and we do. And so here we go. Again, with 62 laps to go, there's still one pit stop left in this race. Matt Hayden, Trey Galgan, Austin Collins, Isaiah Dupree, the only cars that are on the lead lap technically. Rusty Modesty is on the tail end of the lead lap right in front of the leaders. And we'll have to try to run away for dear life on this restart. Four cars on the lead lap. Everybody else stuck a lap or more down. As we get ready to go under the green flag, Matt Hayden again. A golden opportunity to get to victory lane tonight. Now even more golden to finish in the top four to five and gain a serious amount of points on our points leader, Hunter Carlson. He'll inherit the lead on this restart with 62 laps to go. Green flag is back in the air. We are back racing from Dover. Alex Green doesn't really get going on the bottom. They got a split behind him. And Matt Hayden is away with no issue. Rusty Modesty will try to run away, hope for a quick yellow to get him back on the lead lap. Or the tail end of this lead lap group, shall I say. Dupree on the move from fourth. Trying to get back to the race leaders. Hayden tries to run away just a little bit with 61 laps to go and only one pit stop left in the race. Matt Hayden, the Viagra Taurus, he came in tonight second in points. And both of the drivers who started tonight's race that were around him in points have suffered issues. Carlson has called it a night. As of lap 103, Hayden, the only one of the top four cars in points in the field, still running. Caution. Modesty gets his break. And I believe it's back around Davey Weaver. And it's not up around Davey Weaver. It's going to be in front of Davey Weaver, and it's Adam Green in the triple seven. Same thing can happen to him off four on the last run. Happens to him off a of two right here. And he gets around. He's trying to drive out of it, but gets a piece of the side of Jordan Anderson. Holy cow, Stoney Benfield. How in the world did the, ten, did the 75 miss that? And Weaver, oh, man, almost had it missed. Big damage on his cars. He T-bones the triple seven of Adam Green and gets into the incident here in the very tail end. We'll go to another view of it. I'll actually go from up above. This isn't a very good camera angle, so we'll go from up above. Not sure why it's not taking us back to the caution flag, but nonetheless, we'll go back to it the hard way. See how long this car is loose, and I think again, I think he might have saved it if 
it hadn't been for Jordan Anderson going coming underneath him because right here he clips him and then he overcorrects it, goes back to the right, and he's going to pound the outside wall. Now watch him come back down. What goes up at Dover must come back down, and it comes back down right here. And man, collects Davy Weaver in a really big way. That's big contact on Davy Weaver's machine. We'll go look from the view of Stony Benfield because I think he might have had the best view of this one. As he came off a of turn two and somehow, some way, missed this incident. You're on board with Stony Benfield, the faster pastor. He misses both those cars, somehow drives on through and maintains his machine. Rusty Modesty gets the break that he has needed. He gets back on the tail end of our lead lap. Trey Galgan will come to pit road again. This is an interesting decision. We didn't run a ton of laps right there on tires. In fact, only about oh, five or six. In fact, we may run less than that. We may have only run a couple. I think we only ran a couple. So Galgan comes back to pit road. Collins, Dupree, and Modesty, I believe, came to pit road last time by so they'll bypass Trey Galgan here Galgan will maybe stuck fifth on this restart yep, Collins will stay out so will Dupree so will Modesty and Galgan now will have to drive from fifth to the lead under the next green flag run Matt Hayden that's the best opportunity of his season to this point He has not had quite an opportunity this good yet this year. I mean, this is by far his best opportunity to get to victory lane. He'd been in the mix for many races this season. He won back at Loudoun. I believe he won it loud. And let me double check on that, make sure I'm not getting the races mixed up. But I believe he did win the race in Loudon. Yes, he has one win in the Loudon race. So he does have a win on the year. But, I mean, this is his best opportunity now that he's in this points battle and that it's become so incredibly close. This is easily his best opportunity to win a race and make this a really interesting six weeks for the championship. And I would not want to be Hunter Carlson or Christian Strader watching along with this race right now. I would be pacing the floor. Really stressed about watching the six car continue to tick away laps and now being a really great spot with the fastest car on track. Trey Galgan pinned in fifth. Matt Hayden with a lap car as a pick as well. And Chris Weaver can run away and try to put this one to bed. Can he get the job done and make this a heck of a six weeks ahead? Hayden brings him into the restart zone again. Green flag is back in the air at Dover, and we're back underway with 55 laps to go. Fitzmaurice is around on the inside of the racetrack. No caution yet. Fitzmaurice spins the tires and slides sideways on the inside of the racetrack. And all of a sudden, the leaders are pinned way back in traffic. Matt Hayden, what an opportunity. Can the six car pull away into the sunset? 54 laps to go. Still over a quarter of this race to go. We believe a pit stop still to be made. But Matt Hayden is scooting away and has a few lap cars as picks here. Stoney Benfield one lap down. Very competitive lap car. About three car lengths behind him. And then Chris Weaver behind him. Austin Collins, Isaiah Dupree about to go to battle for second. Galgan still pinned all the way back there in fifth position behind Modesty, behind Brent Elmore and behind the rest of these cars between himself and the leader. Closing in on 50 laps to go, the final quarter of this one from Dover. 
Matt Hayden is hoping this one stays green, I'd imagine. Benfield may try to get his lap back right here. Brent Elmore's in the wall further back. Galgan is by Austin Collins. That's for fourth. May have been Collins in the wall that I saw off turn number four. Galgan will now go to work on Modesty. That will be for third. But he's still got considerable work to do. He got pinned by pitting under the last caution. I'll tell you what, Stoney Benfield is showing some serious speed right now. Dupree's starting to lose some time. Matt Hayden is scooting away. Can he make it to the end on fuel? I don't think so. I think there's still a pit stop. I, think, I don't think everybody can make it on fuel. I think everybody's going to have to pit again. I don't think anybody can make it on gas. 50 laps remaining here from Dover, and Matt Hayden is currently making Christian Strader and Hunter Carlson sweat. I guarantee he's making those two, really Cody Eldred as well. He's making all three of those guys sweat. The only person who has any bearing on the points situation at this point in the race is the man you're looking at and the man leading the race. As Galgan continues to lose a little bit of time, he's over three seconds behind the leader. Over two and a half back to Modesty and 2.3 back to Isaiah Dupree. Galgan, can he get his act together? Can he pull himself up out of this and come back to win the race? He's now three seconds behind Matt Hayden with 48 laps to go. Crunch time at Dover. The Viagra Ford Taurus has had this one served to him on a platter, and I don't mean that negatively. Sometimes that's just how the race comes to you. It has come to Hayden. He's got the most favorable set of circumstances, and for a guy that at times this year has not had favorable circumstances, that is a big deal. Dupree has had some trouble back there in the third position. He drops second to Rusty Modesty, who now will start to try to run down the leader. Getting close to 45 laps to go. Matt Hayden looking for a statement win to make this a really, really interesting points battle, but Rusty Modesty is starting to close the gap. Modesty, a teammate at Misfits Motorsports of Matt Hayden. Modesty yet to record a victory. Does have a podium finish, but yet to get that elusive win in this series. Galgan is still pinned in fourth. He's going to have to go through two cars and a couple lap machines to get to the leader. And still three seconds back. 45 laps to go. Will there be pit stops? What is going to go into the end period of this race? Modesty only two seconds back. He picked up another tenth. Dupree starting to pick up a little bit of time as well. Galgan still pinned three seconds back. Now closes to within three, but he's not gaining time at the rate that he needs to. He's over a tenth faster than the leader last time by. Now even times. Modesty the fastest car on the racetrack. Now Rusty Modesty will have to go by a very competitive lap car in Stony Benfield that I can't imagine will pull over and let him go. Hayden, did he perhaps drive too hard on the early part of this run? Did he not really save enough stuff? Even a fourth place finish would benefit Matt Hayden, I'll be honest. It would be a 13-point swing. It would bring him to within six points of Hunter Carlson. But you know deep down he wants the victory. And closing in on 40 laps to go. With modesty closing in, he's going to have to engage himself in a dogfight to hold on to this one. Benfield will be the most interesting car here. What will he do with the leaders coming up behind him? Will he try to be that Ryan Newman that's so hard to pass? Will he hold up Modesty and company? Will he just hang a right and get out of the way? He's so close to the leader. I mean, I expect he wouldn't just pull over and let him go by. I figure he'd try to make this a little bit scrappy. Modesty a little bit loose. He loses a little bit of time. Fastest car on the track is Trey Galgan. And it's really not close. Two tenths. But Galgan has some more cars to get past before he can get to Matt Hayden. 1.2 seconds back to what's about to be, I believe, a battle for second. 40 laps to go. If you're Hayden, you're just hoping to hold on to this long enough that you get to that last pit stop. 
if there is a last pit stop? And that's another question. Will there be a final pit stop? Dupree through to second. He gets around Rusty Modesty. Galgan is closing in on that battle. Has to not take too much time getting around those two race cars, though. If he does, this one could be signed, sealed, and delivered for Matt Hayden. Inside of 40 laps to go at Dover with Matt Hayden looking for the biggest win of his season, perhaps the biggest of his throwback series career for third, Galgan on Modesty. He's picked one of them off. He will now run down Isaiah Dupree. He was pinned fifth two cautions ago and is now 1.2 seconds behind the leader. Galgan closing on Dupree. He's going to have to make it quick if he wants to get up to the leader. Did he burn his stuff? He's now a second and a half back. Did he burn too much of his stuff trying to get around? Is he going to burn it all trying to pass Matt Hayden? Still a solid second and a half. Only a second back to Matt, uh, to Matt Dupree, to Isaiah Dupree. Excuse me, eight tenths back. I'm looking at the wrong guy. Eight tenths back to Dupree. A second back to Galgan. They're both closing in. Dupree now the first to take on Stoney Benfield. He'll get around with no contest. Galgan will as well. Galgan and Dupree, here's the problem. They're going to have to settle this battle out between themselves first, I think. Galgan to the inside of Dupree. Will he get the spot off for Dupree? Battles him hard, but he will not have a contest. Galgan to second. Matt Aiden's not going to give this up without a fight. Seven tenths back to Trey Galgan. He's been the fastest car on track all night. 35 to go. Remember, another pit stop most likely looming here in the distance for our leaders. Galgan is closing in and closing in quickly. Gets a little bit loose there off turn four, has to regain. And we'll start to close in again. Hayden... I mean, he's probably going to have to come off the top to try to hold down the 46 of Galgan or 49 of Galgan on the bottom of the racetrack. You're going to have to try to hold him down there. He's been so good on the bottom all night. And here he comes, two car lengths back. 33 to go in Dover. Galgan and Dupree approach. And here comes Trey Galgan. This could be the battle for the win. One car length. Hayden transitions down the speedway to take away some air off Trey. Galgan, he gets way loose there off of four. Galgan goes on by. He will inherit the lead. Galgan gets the lead. Hayden trying to regroup and may have burnt the rest of his stuff. He'll drop to third here behind Isaiah Dupree. Now we'll try to hold on to that spot. And Galgan can potentially start to ride into the sunset, but here comes Hayden to pit road. Matt Hayden, what looked to be the statement effort may have just turned on its head. Oh, but they're all coming to pit road. Here comes Galgan to pit road. Oh boy. Rusty Modesty on pit road as well. As Austin Collins come to pit road, the leaders are on pit road. Collins, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, he had the car off right there in three and four. He's going to try to save this one out. He's got the car off. He's coasting with 30 to go. Nothing to lose for the 46, to be fair. He's got absolutely nothing to lose. So there is no harm in trying this strategy. Bold, bold strategy by the Austin Collins machine. He's got the car off still. Dupree is out on the racetrack as well. And by the way, of the leaders at a pit, Matt Hayden has jumped Trey Galgan by three seconds. 
as Matt Hayden made the race winning pit stop. It is over three seconds between Hayden and Trey Galgan for what would be provisionally the lead. So Isaiah Dupree is the leader right now. As we have all kinds of pitch strategy unfolding, Dupree still has the car on. Collins is turning his off in the corners to try to save some gas. Galgan is quickly closing in on Matt Hayden, so the short pit may not have worked. It's 2.6 seconds and closing quickly. But it may not matter, depending on what these guys in front of them can do on fuel. If Dupree and Collins can make this work, they're going to come away with a victory. Twenty-four laps to go, so we'll keep you updated. Matt Hayden, Trey Galgan, Rusty Modesty, Brian Elmore, Brent Elmore, everybody all the way down the rest of the field has pit. Green starts to slide. If he wrecks and brings out a caution, that's going to completely change the outlook of this race. I think he was able to keep it straight. He was. Man, Dupree and Collins, they could have used that. The cars that have not pit. Dupree, Collins, Weaver, Anderson. That is the four cars left that have not come to pit road. Dupree, whoa, that was should have been contact right there. Matt Aiden's about to be passed up by Trey Galgan. That'll be for the provisional lead should these four cars up front not be able to make it. And actually, they're both about to pass by Jordan Anderson, and they both do here in three and four, or here in one and two. Chris Weaver can't make it. He's on pit road. Dupree, Collins, the only two cars left on the speedway. 21 laps to go. Galgan has passed Matt Hayden. That is for, for provisional lead for fourth on the, or excuse me, for third on the racetrack. 20 laps to go. They're not going to make up enough time here to be able to uh, to pass him, or Galgan and Hayden. They're not going to make up enough time. They're going to have to hope that these guys have to pit. Dupree with 19 laps to go. And if this works for Isaiah Dupree, mark it down. It's one of the all-time strategy calls. Collins I think might be in a better spot to make it work, but he's also in a worse spot for getting run down by Trey Galgan. And if he gets run down, the strategy's not really going to matter. He may have just turned it on. He may he may have gotten the go-ahead just now. Oh, no. He's still got the car off. Let's see. Let's see if, let's see if he's still got the car off in the corner. Yeah, he's still powering it off, so... He does still have about an 11 and a half second buffer back to Trey Galgan. But that gap is closing quickly. It's now 10.9 seconds. So he may just, it may not work in terms of timing. Dupree has got plenty of buffer that he could easily coast down the backstretch pretty much every lap till the end of the race and still probably get away with a victory. About to be 15 laps to go. The gap is down to 9.2, and he's losing time way too fast is Austin Collins. He's losing a second and a half per lap. At the rate that is going, he's going to be caught in about the next five laps. 
Make it make it five and a half. Dupree is running about a second and uh, let's see, uh, about 1.2 seconds. And if that's the pace, they're not going to catch him. But it's all said and done. Dupree off the racetrack, and he boots pit road. And now has to fire it back up. And on by go the leaders. Collins is now in the catbird seat, potentially to take away a victory. He's still got the car off. He's only got about a five and a half second buffer here to Trey Galgan. He's got to probably turn it up here in a second if he wants to try to run away from that Trey Galgan machine. Still got the car off. Still 5.2 seconds to work with. He's still losing about a second a lap. If that's the case, he's not going to make it to the end in terms of keeping the lead. Only loses about seven tenths that time. If that's the case, it'll take him a little bit longer to catch him. But goes back to losing a little bit more right here off of two. And again, is losing a little bit too much pace to be able to keep the lead. Matt Hayden's about to be caught by Rusty Modesty. That'll be for second on the board if Collins cannot make it. What a wild strategy ending to this one. Dupree does make pit road, but he'll be considerably behind the eight ball here. With inside of five, uh, 15 laps to go, he'll go a lap down and be in the fifth position. Galgan two seconds back. Does not look like this one's going to work for Austin Collins, who is going to have to pick it up here in a moment, have to pick the pace up a little bit and try to run away from an on-charging Trey Galgan. 11 laps to go in Dover, and Galgan is closing in and closing in in a hurry. This race has had just a little bit about a, a little bit of everything over the course of the last little bit, and here comes Trey Galgan. Ten laps remain here in Dover, and Galgan can taste the lead. Now, will Hayden and Modesty be able to get to Collins is my question. Will Collins be able to make the end of the race? Galgan to the race lead with nine laps to go. So Trey Galgan can start to ride into the sunset just a little bit. And what about Austin Collins? He's going to continue to lose time now. It's just a matter of how much time he loses, how many positions he loses over the next eight laps. Eight to go for Trey Galgan, who I'm sure has endured about every emotion there is to endure during the course of a league race here tonight in the OP Racing Throwback Series. He's endured about all of them. Collins continues to lose time. As Galgan up off turn four, and again, he can taste it. Seven laps to go in Dover. Modesty closing in on his teammate, Matt Hayden, for, for third. We'll go back to that battle here in a moment. We'll actually go back there now. Well, Isaiah Dupree's got the fastest tires, uh, excuse me, fastest, uh, freshest tires on the racetrack, and he's going to drive right around both these guys for, for third. Here comes Rusty Modesty. And so third place will change hands. Austin Collins is just ahead of these guys. I would expect them to go to second and third as Collins tries to stretch out the last of this fuel tank. He'll be passed here in three and four by both cars. Passed by one, passed by both. So move Collins back to fourth position. As Modesty gets by for second. Trey Galgan. I thought he was going to win his first Thursday race at Chicagoland early in the season. Fuel strategy bit him. 
and unfortunately he was not able to go to victory lane in that race. He comes back to put on an incredibly dominant performance at Michigan where he leads most of the laps that night and wins the race in a landslide. Then, in the complete opposite, he has to win the race late at Bristol in a late race incredible run for the last 35 laps where he drove back to the lead. And tonight, the race is going to end just a little bit early for him. He won't have to do the entire distance as long as he can miss the wreck. There's cars wrecking here on the backstretch with Bo Benham. And Jimmy Fitzmaurice, Trey Galgan avoids disaster. And that will do it. That will bring the race to a completion. We'll quickly go take a look at what brought out the caution flag as I believe it was the Jimmy Fitzmaurice machine with Bo Benham. We'll quickly watch a replay here and then go back up front as they're already pacing two laps to go. Fitzmaurice tagged by Bo Benham here off turn number two. And they both go for a spin. This is not far in front of the leaders when it happens. Benham slides down the C's part for Brian Elmore, who drives right through the center. And gets on by. But both these cars spin to a halt on the back straightaway, and that is what brings out what's going to be the final caution of the night. For Austin Collins, that is the saving grace he needed because now you can all but coast that car to the start-finish line and complete this race. He might come to pit road for gas right here. We'll see, but he might just keep it on the racetrack and bring it home in fourth. That's going to be a nice strategy payoff or Austin Collins. For Rusty Modesty, an incredible effort tonight. Another podium finish for him in a race that I think he might have had more to say about had there been some more laps. We already talked about Trey Galgan and his effort after winning at Michigan and Bristol. Comes back to win tonight's race. He'll win it in somewhat dominant fashion. He certainly was the fastest car, but did not lead a ton of laps in this race. Nonetheless, he's going to go to victory lane. And for Matt Hayden, that is the storyline of the night. Matt Hayden is going to swing this points battle and throw it into complete chaos with six races to go. Hunter Carlson, the points leader, will lose 14 points on Hayden. It'll be a five-point gap. Or I believe a six-point gap, excuse me. Uh, no, it will be five. Five-point gap headed into the last six races of the year. Christian Schrader loses that ground as well. He'll drop back to third in the standings. Or he'll stay third in the standings. As he will finish 18th tonight. Off turn number four for the final time. It is going to be under the caution flag, but nonetheless, it counts all the same. Trey Galgan is going to win here in the Dover Downs. He'll conquer the Monster Mile and the Miles Trophy will await him in victory lane. Galgan wins it in Dover. A bit anticlimactic. He was going to win regardless, but nonetheless, he crosses the line, completes this race, and will now most likely drive around the pace car, I imagine, to come celebrate here on the front straightaway, and we'll give him a chance to do so. Galgan wins. Hayden again, incredible run for the six. I mean, you can't say enough about what he did in the point standings. A gutsy performance. As Galgan will come and celebrate, and then we will get into the post-race show. Here from Dover. Trey Galgan, imagine he'll drop that car in gear. And do a few burnouts here on the front stretch at Dover.
Kyle Larson style burnouts here for Trey Galligan. Is he'll come back. He'll park it on the line. And a great effort tonight from Trey Galligan. We'll now enter the post-race show here from Dover Motor Speedway. And we'll get into the finishing results. Trey Galligan is your winner here from Dover. Rusty Modesty finishes second. Matt Hayden in the third position. Austin Collins makes the field strategy work. He finishes fourth. And Isaiah Dupree finishes in fifth. Stoney Benfield finishes sixth. Good run for the faster passer. Brian Elmore finishes seventh. And Brent Elmore finishes eighth. Good runs for both of them. Jordan Anderson finishes ninth. And Jimmy Fitzmaurice rounds out your top ten. Chris Weaver finishes 11th tonight with Bo Benham in 12th. Gary Falco in 13th. Alex Green 14th. Adam Green in 15th. Davey Weaver in 16th. And the big stories of the night, the points leader Hunter Carlson 17th. And Christian Strader finishes in 18th position. We'll get into the post-race interviews now with your top three. We'll get them in here, hear what they have to say about tonight's race. And we will start with a man who quite possibly had the biggest night, the most consequential night, should I say, of any of the top three, and that is the third-place driver, Matt Hayden, in the six. Hey, Matt, it's Dawson in the booth. You got a copy? Hey, Dawson. Well, I was, I was talking a little bit ago. You had the lead there with about 40 to go, and I said, you know what? Even if he doesn't win this race, if he finishes where he's at now with the way it panned out, He's going to really throw this points battle into some chaos. You do just that. It's a gutsy performance for, from you tonight in Dover. Take us through your night here at the Monster Mile. Yeah, it was um, – obviously we had a little bit of a um, struggle uh, across the board. Um, it's – Dover with these cars is tough. So, you know, it's um, – it was more of a uh, survival demolition derby style race. Um I know Hunter had some trouble. Um, so, I mean, you like to race stuff out uh, for a championship. Um, so it's kind of a shame. It's straighter. Same thing with him. Just kind of, um, you know, unfortunate for them. But like I said, you know, we just tried to <clears throat> keep it off the wall as much as we could and gain as many points as we could. And I think we uh, we did that. I, I, I think um, had a little bit of an issue on that last pit stop. I think uh, I'll have to go back and look. But. Somehow or another, I think I only took right side tires. Um, so um, we could have had second, but hats off to Ray. He, he mopped the floor with this. I knew right off the bat he was he was the uh, pace. Um, so, um, yeah, we'll just uh, go on, see if we can improve next week. Well, six weeks to go in the season, and you've pulled now to within five points of our points leader. It's a really, really hot and heavy points battle at the top of the chart between the top three. Um, as you guys continue to battle it out, you got six races left. How are you going to get an upper hand and get yourself into position to win the championship? I think uh, in these and just like for you know 2001, you know point style, it's consistency. Consistency is more than anything. Um, you know the the Mark Martin approach to it. You don't have to win all the races. You just got to you know be up there and uh, maximize your amount of points because I think the the point spread on this is it's it's more detrimental to get top fives um and you know then to win and then have a dnf so um we're just gonna try to mix it up up front just uh, maximize the amount of points and uh, minimize the mistakes and try to finish all these out well, we look forward to where the season goes from here now with that points paddle atop the standings it's a third place finish for you tonight here in dover before we let you go and celebrate it a little bit is there anybody you'd like to thank or shout out yeah, I want to thank uh, the guys over at Misfit Motorsports. Rusty with a good finish, got me in the end there. Um, so good battle with teammate. He ran up front with me. We, we had good pace together. Um, I know Jimmy and uh, Gary kind of had a tough night early on with it. Uh, I want to thank Lindsey Fitzmaurice uh, for setting these cars up for us and allowing Jimmy to uh, spend a few hours with us without uh, yelling at him too much. So, um, yeah, just want to thank everybody out there watching. Dawson for the broadcast. Awesome job as usual. So we appreciate everything everybody does. We appreciate you talking to us here for a second. Congratulations on the third-place finish, and we will see you here in a couple weeks. Appreciate it, Dustin. Matt Hayden, your second or third-place finisher tonight from Dover, will now move to his teammate at Misfits Motorsports. The 12 machine tonight on the sim, the 5 on the side of the car for Rusty Modesty. We actually, oddly enough, cannot grab him. So, oh, well, there we go. It wasn't coming up. Uh, but now we can go grab him and we can see what he's got to say about his night as well. 
Hey, Rusty, it's Dawson in the booth. You get a copy? Hey, Dawson. Well, a good race for you tonight. Good race for you and your teammate, Matt Hayden. We just got to hear from him. Uh, take us through your night. Obviously, very fast all night, and the strategy kind of got all over the place there at the end. Take us through that chaotic last run. Yeah, it seemed like if we could get rolling, we stayed rolling, but um, once we tried to do some restarts, it's just chaos, man. Um I think I was all over the track. We, we were up front. We were in the back. We started the race from <laughs> tail end of the lead lap. We were all over. I uh, got got some luck and um, ended ended back up. I think there were only like five cars on the lead lap there towards the end. So, um, oh, we ended with four four cars on the lead lap. So, um, yeah, I think it was just try to survive and not not get caught up in any crazy stuff and um, do your best to keep the tires under it. So. Well, you did that tonight, and as we go forward here again, taking the league by storm, that's a couple podium finishes for you. Now, we've seen you run up front, but, you know, what What are you going to do differently in the next six weeks? There's the championship battle going on around you, obviously, but what are you going to try to do here to get to victory lane before this season comes to an end? Oh, man, I hope I can get one. Um, I will just stay patient uh, again, just try to try to keep the fenders under it, and I'm sure we'll have a shot, so um... – Happy with the podium, but you're right. Uh, win, win has hopefully coming soon here. Well, hopefully we'll get to talk to you again in victory lane here very shortly in this series. So before we let you go, it's a second-place finish. Absolutely nothing to scoff at tonight. Runner-up finish for you here in Dover. So before we let you go, is there anybody you'd like to thank or shout out? Yeah, I appreciate everyone over at Misfit uh, Motorsports. Just run with these guys every week. And, and fun group, awesome group, lots of laughs. Um, and uh, shout out to you guys for broadcasting. You put on an awesome broadcast. Uh, it's really fun to watch. Really fun for all the friends, and family. And uh, thanks to LP for letting me let me in and race. Uh, it's been fun so far. Um, lastly, uh, shout out to Jimmy's wife. You know she's the wind beneath my wings. Well, congratulations on a second place finish. Thanks for talking to me for a second. Go enjoy it. Go celebrate, and we will see you soon. Thanks. Rusty Modesty in the five, the second place finisher tonight. And it leaves us with only one man left to talk to, and that's the man who went back to victory lane, his third win of his career here in the throwback series. And we'll see what he's got to say about his dominant effort here tonight. Hey, Trey, it's Dawson the Booth. You get a copy? Yeah, I got you. Well, it's victory for you tonight. Now, it looked like uh, perhaps – you might have uh, have gotten stuck in traffic there with about 40 laps to go, and then the strategy ends up all over the place. When you come off pit road, you not only you know have to drive back to you know what would have been the lead, which ended up being third, but you also had to drive by a couple cars on fuel strategy. Take me through what was going through your mind on that last pit uh, that last pit stop. Um, it was pretty much once the six pitted. Um, I just knew the next lap I had to pit with him, uh, just to keep the the tires the same because I knew once you, you know, got out out in front and if I would have waited 10, 12 laps, you know, he would have had, he would have just had a better better advantage on me than than I would have. So I ended up pitted with it, uh, pitted with them, um, and then uh, you know took, you know, made it made a little field call myself um, on that and was able to that helped me to to catch down the leaders before they even pitted, um, and then that ultimately helped me catch the uh the guys on field strategy and pass them uh for the win ultimately well three wins now here in the throwback series for you on thursday nights you won at michigan one at bristol and now one at dover um what can we expect here for the next six weeks you know more trips to victory lane for the 49 coming up what can we expect well if i get to uh get to run these races uh you know, hopefully uh it's same plan as always just save tires keep the fenders on it and uh you know just be there in the end like like always so uh i i hope to be in victor lane but uh we'll just have to see well, we look forward to seeing it here over the next several weeks as the season comes to a close you win again tonight in dover so before we let you go and celebrate is there anybody you'd like to thank or shout out uh, i'd like to thank uh g3 graphics uh, admin box uh Ooh, I can't think of the other one. Can't think of the other one. Um, but uh, those guys, everyone, everyone that supports this car, everyone supports my sim racing. Um, but uh, yeah, I like to thank all those guys. And uh, yeah. Well, congratulations on another victory here tonight in Dover. Go enjoy it. Go celebrate, and we will see you soon. Thank you. Trey Galgan, the winner tonight from Dover. 
I mean, his thoughts on that last run and what a chaotic race this was. I mean, the early cautions, then we get into a green flag run, and a caution throws the strategy off. We get back to normal, get back under our get our feet back under us, and then another caution comes out, throws the strategy way off kilter. We end up with five cars on the lead lap, and then fuel strategy almost caused some problems, but in the end, Trey Galgan weathers all of those storms and goes back to victory lane, his third win in the throwback series. Matt Aiden, a great day for him in points. And Rusty Modesty continues to take this league by storm. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, here tonight from Dover. Despite all the technical issues, my apologies for that. Unfortunately, technology gets the better of us sometimes, and tonight uh, it did at the start. But, again, no problems after that. Uh, we're grateful uh, for no problems after that point. Uh, again, no broadcast next week, next Thursday night. I will not be in town, so no broadcast. I will be racing in Kansas. I will recap Kansas for you in two weeks' time on Thursday night. Um, when we come back to the series, I believe we're going to Charlotte in two weeks. Um, so be back here for that. I'll recap Kansas, maybe get a chance to talk to the winner from Kansas uh, here next Thursday night. Head to PGRE Sports right now here on YouTube for the conclusion of the Intimidator Super Speedway Series over there on PGRE Sports Network. I'm headed that way myself uh, to join Austin Green for the final few laps on the call. Other than that, tomorrow night on PGRE Sports, Super Speedway Kings, hosted by Jimmy Crow, returns to the Talladega Super Speedway, a truck Xfinity doubleheader tomorrow night. I'll have the call for you on PGRE Sports. First race at 9.15, second race at 10.40. I hope everyone enjoyed tonight's broadcast. Thank you so much to Premier Racing Setups for sponsoring the Turn 3 Racing Network, our home for all things iRacing Setups. Go help, go check them out, prssetups.com. Again, everybody, I hope you enjoyed. I, I know I certainly did, and I look forward to seeing you back here in two weeks. Everybody have a great night. Have a great week. You've been watching.